when we purchased this 31 foot Mariah class Pacific Seacraft boat, we realized that it had to have the bow sprint remanufactured. It had been damaged several times by obvious strikes against piers and walls and things like that. So it had to be rebuilt. As you can see from these pictures, whoever owned this boat <coughs> either didn't seal the wood properly when they built the bow sprint. And because it got moisture under it, somebody decided to paint over the moisture and that just made it rot inside. Now the teak wood didn't rot. The teak wood was only damaged. But the bow sprint itself rotted big time. As you can see in this last picture where the glue line is all rotted out. The reference we decided to use for dimensioning this bow sprint is the stainless steel strap with the bow of the boat. The stainless steel strap is also, <coughs> excuse me, I have a cold. The stainless steel strap is also used to connect the shelter to the boat so the wind cannot rip the shelter apart. Here is the bow sprint dimensional drawing. Not only is it tapered, but it also has a round end on it. So this creates problems. Make sure you read all three notes. Pause the video and read the three notes because they explain a lot of detail about how this bow sprint was replicated. After considerable thinking outside of the box, we finally realized that we did not need to put the bow sprint in a wood lathe, which we didn't have because it was over eight feet long. Instead, we could simply take a dado blade on a table saw and move the, rotate the bow sprint slowly over this dado blade and we would get our circular end of the bow sprint. So here's the setup we used. First, we found the center of both ends of the bow sprint and mounted a one quarter inch lag bolt in the end. We threaded the lag bolt down to the shoulder so the shoulder gave it a sturdy connection to the end of the wood. Then we cut the head of the lag bolt off with the hacksaw. This facilitated removing the bow sprint while we we're doing measurements. We repeated this procedure for the other end of the bow sprint and then we had to mount it so that it was level with the floor. As you can see in this picture, we mounted a vertical plywood section to the fence of the table saw and set the height by drilling a hole, a quarter of an inch hole. And then we went to the other end of the bow sprint and set the height from the floor the same as the height of the hole in the fence attachment. This made the bow sprint level with the floor. And now we could commence using the dado bit to make circles. Some of those tighter with the makeup for that looser one. Yeah, the back one's only a real loose one. They're ready to move it again. We'll do the move on the video too. <laughs> now hold it, hold it. Make sure to get all that. I want to go past, I want to get this back edge because I want to take beyond there as much as I can. I just got to slide over that crap to get on Okay, there. you got to go down a little. Which way? You got a quarter of an inch towards you. Hold it, hold it, hold it. That might be too much. Let me check it. Now to get it. About half a blade's width. Get that up too tight. Jams it up. I don't. Oh. If 
if you notice right here, there's a shoulder developing on the left side of the dado blade. That's because originally we didn't take the lag bolt all the way down to the lag bolt shoulder. This allowed it to wall out with time and then caused the section beyond the left side of the dado blade to be different as far as the center goes. Bringing the lag bolt down to the shoulder, then that makes it much more stable. The next issue we had to address was getting the deck runners so that the, the steel bolts that went through the bow sprint were horizontal with the plane of the boat so that the deck runners would look level when you look at the front of the boat. So to do that we decided to use the bottom of the bow sprint as the reference point and then turn it 90 degrees and drill the holes. We built a jig using a tube of four, eight foot long and a piece of plywood strip at each end to hold the height. And we set the two before angle across the drill press such that the center of both ends of the bow sprint were the same height off the floor. This compensated for the taper of the bow sprint and when we drill a hole it would be perpendicular to the points between the two centers of the bow sprint. The blocks of wood you see between the bow sprint and the two before, eight foot long two before, those blocks are adjusting the height of the bow sprint. We can slide the bow sprint horizontally and use the same number of blocks. All the holes drilled through the side of the bow sprint will be perpendicular to the floor. This bow sprint is placed with the top of the bow sprint facing the camera. You see the four holes there. These are the four holes that bolt the bow sprint to the bow of the boat. So basically the bolt would be laying on its port side if this was mounted to the bolt. So the top of the bow sprint is actually the starboard side of the bow sprint. And we're going to drill holes through here for the bolts which hold the deck runners in place. This is a video clip demonstrating how we held the bottom of the bow sprint, which is the right hand side of the bow sprint. We held it parallel with the drill bit itself so that the hole going through the bow sprint would be parallel to the ocean, basically. Each hole to be drilled was repositioned appropriately using this method. As shown in this drawing, we had the original deck runner design and we now have our new improved deck runner design. This was improved by adding larger pieces of wood on the end of the deck runners such that the bolt was not close to the end of a piece of wood. Another reason for gluing these uh, deck runner blocks on each end, these wider blocks, is because the lifeline pulpit has to bolt to these blocks. So by having larger blocks that are glued to the runners, then we get a much more solid structure.